What's up everybody? Welcome back to Water Warrior Fishing and today I think I've got a pretty interesting topic for you guys. Something that I don't find talked about often enough and that is how to be a co-angler. So we're going to talk a little bit about how to be a co-angler today. I'll give you a few tips and things that have helped me out in my co-angler career before I was lucky enough to get my own boat. <music> What exactly is a co-angler? Anytime that you're the passenger on a boat and you're going out fishing, you are essentially the co-angler. If you're in a tournament setting, they basically pick names out of a hat or through a lottery system, and that selects who goes on whose boat. So co-anglers get paired randomly with the boaters. That's basically how that system works. Otherwise, you're going to be a co-angler on a friend's boat or you know pleasure boating, whatever, with a friend. Co-anglers run into a couple challenges on the water. Uh, number one being back boating. I've been in this position plenty of times. So back boating is when the boater does not give you adequate chances at casting to prime locations or good spots basically so he positions the boat at an angle to where you are forced to cast to a non prime location or back out behind the boat that would be back boating there's really nothing you can do about that except for ask kindly to get a shot at what's in front of the boat the best compromise I would say is to be prepared um, only you know who you're going fishing with so you know how to best approach that situation just go into it with a positive mind and know that you are the passenger not the captain just focus on your fishing and prepare to the best of your ability so that you can go out there and catch fish. And with that being said, guys, I've got a couple of tips for you to improve your chances of catching quality fish and more fish on the water as a co-angler, no matter what your situation. And the first tip would be stay organized. What to bring and what not to bring in order to appease your boater and make life easier for yourself in the back of the boat. All right, so right here, guys, I've got a PFD, personal flotation device, AKA save your life. Most tournament guys, most water warriors, that is, have a PFD on them. So they'll have an extra and they don't want you bringing this so that they can be tripping over this the whole tournament or the whole day out on the water. If your boater has a life jacket, don't bring it. All right, so next on the list is lunch. If you're like me, you want a snack. That does not mean be a fat ass and bring a lunchbox the size of a tackle bag. So this is about as big as I would go on a lunchbox. Bring things that won't get the boat dirty. Don't bring like freaking kava and chipotle like I do. When they find corn in the cracks of their seats, they're going to be mad at you. So, uh, you know, just keep it simple and do not bring bananas. Don't do that. And if you do bring bananas before your boater sees, throw them out. Hey, Strykel, I saw you throw them out in the tournament. Good move, buddy. But that's that for lunch. Next we have depth finder. Now this is a very fancy unit, but where are you gonna hook this up? I don't know. There is a solution for depth finders as a co-angler, believe it or not. I would ask your boater first if you can bring a portable depth finder, but that is a very, very good compromise. Some guys only have one unit, so you're gonna have to walk up to the front of the boat, look at their unit to see the depth and all that, or ask them 50 times in a day, uh, what depth are we at, uh, blah, blah, blah. Boom. This right here is a portable Humminbird Piranha Max unit. I don't know if they make it anymore, but as you can see here, it's got a suction cup. And if you're fishing on any John boats or fiberglass, which is pretty much all the boats, this will stick very well to the hull or the transom. As long as you're not in the way of uh, your boater's transducer, then you can attach this somewhere on the boat. When the transducer is set up, you'll start to get a reading here. You'll get your depth, your temperature, all that. But that's your compromise. That's your solution for a depth finder as a co-angler. Now we're gonna move on to tackle, the most important part. That right there is way too much of a bag. I could fit in here, guys. Don't bring it, too big. I used to bring this out. The guys would look at me like, so do yourself a favor and do your boater a favor and don't bring this size bag, it's just unnecessary. Here's what else you shouldn't bring. Don't bring these loose, okay? You should have some sort of tackle organizer where you can put a couple of these in. Now that I've told you everything not to do on the boat as a co-angler and what not to bring, let's talk about what you should bring. Let's start with the tackle bag, the spider wire cloth bag. It's a very, very versatile bag, has a lot of storage. I've cycled through quite a few different bags. This has been the best one so far, so I'll walk you through what it fits in it and what I bring and what I think you should bring too as a co-angler. Let's start with the small pocket. First off, you're going to need the essentials. Your pliers, your clippers, so having a straight razor to cut braid, find that necessary very often on the water. 
Then I've got a line stripper, okay? So if you want to re-spool line on the water and not waste time, this thing will save you a lot of time. This thing has a very convenient Velcro strap here on the side, and the rag fits right through the O-ring. So that's how I managed to fit two rags on my bag. I'm just working my way down the pockets. Pay attention to what I'm bringing. So we have the essentials, the clippers, the pliers, the line stripper, the straight razor for cutting braid. Then we have your spike it, your scents, and I also have my scale. And I've got some rubber bands in here. You never know when you'll need rubber bands. Next compartment on the bag is going to fit the personal essentials, okay? If you are a saltine like I am, all right, and you get crispy out there in the sun, bring your sunscreen. And then I've also got the baby wipes. Shout out to my girlfriend for getting me hip to these. For you manly men, dude wipes. For the rest of us, baby wipes do the job. You also definitely want to bring your fishing license. I also bring one of these guys to fit my phone so that in case of rain or whatever, I can put my phone in here. I can put any electronics I have. This section right here, and I've got all different lines in here. When I'm on the water, I tend to bring 20 pound fluorocarbon to connect as a leader to my 50 pound braid. I bring 10 pound monofilament for most of my cranking, for my light cranking. When I get down to deeper cranks, I'll throw like 12 pound fluoro. Then I've got my 50 pound braid. I got two spools of that. Lastly, some 20 pound copolymer. What we've gone over so far, the essentials, the line cutters, the clippers, the pliers, the line stripper, the fishing license, the spike it, the scents, whatever scents you want to bring, your scale. Uh, you've also got your sunscreen and your baby wipes for doing the business. And then you've also got line. That's what we've gone over so far. Let's not forget tackle. I got a big pocket in this bag that fits two of these guys. So in one of them, I bring my hard baits, crank baits, spinner baits, chatter baits, top water, like Zara Spook and all that. So that box is for that. A lot of times you'll get caught out in the rain on the water and then you don't want all of your terminal tackle getting rusty. So the Plano 3640 model, waterproof. So for a typical day on the water, I've got shaky heads, slider heads, jigs, and all the hooks and other shaky heads I need, as well as all of the weights I need. So this box serves as your terminal tackle box. Then you need to bring soft plastics. I've got every single soft plastic I could ever need. And my tip to organization for you guys is to group them by type. My Senkos, Craws, Finesse, Brush Hog, everything rubber banded together in a pile. And then I've got this in like a gallon Ziploc freezer bag. And that fits directly back into this bag, okay? One thing I have not mentioned, when I was in a tournament club, we used to have a limit on the rods and reels you could bring. They had a six setup limit, or you probably want to do like a six or less. So with that being said, the best way to organize your rods and reels is to have these straps, okay? They're Velcro straps. I put one on the upper portion of the rods, and then I've got a second strap right here and it holds the bottom together. And then I've also got rod socks. It kind of prevents line from getting tangled around one another and that saves you time on the water. That's all you need to know about being a co-angler. If I missed anything, please comment below and I'd be glad to answer for you if you have any questions. Hopefully I taught you something about how to be a more efficient and effective co-angler today. Hopefully next time you're out there, you'll have a much more enjoyable and productive time. Thanks for joining me on Water Warrior Fishing. See you guys next time.